So this pathway, which is downstream from RAS, um, we're just going to look at the um, phosphoinositol 3 kinase protein and the activity of this protein, and then how it leads to the formation of this molecule, which can then activate another protein kinase. So we had the MAP kinase pathway leading to um, activation of a kinase, and ev even this pathway again is involved RAS activating a different set of kinases. And we'll just quickly look at this pathway because it's very important in a variety of cancers. Um, and some of the downstream um, phenotypes that this pathway controls would be um, apoptosis um, and you know, stimulation of, of, of cell growth. So it's an important um, pathway to look at. So PI3 kinase, um, it can be activated directly by receptors or it can be activated by um, RAS in its GTP form. And what does PI3 kinase do? It phosphorylates things, but it doesn't phosphorylate other proteins. It phosphorylates um, these lipids that are in the plasma membrane. So it phosphorylates these ino inositol-containing phospholipids. So just a quick primer, if you think about the, the plasma membrane, it's um, the, there's, there's the inner and outer leaflets of the plasma membrane. Within the inner side of the plasma membrane, um, along with the normal sort of lipids that are present, there are these inositol-containing lipids. So inositol is just a sugar, so the sugar that's um, as part of these um, lipids is an inositol sugar. And that inositol can be phosphorylated by PI3 kinase. And don't forget, a lot of signaling happens at the membrane, because that's where the receptors are bound, and the phosphorylation of this lipid at the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane is also important in some signaling pathways. So again, there's way too much information on this um, figure, so don't get put off. But um, here's the PI3 kinase here. All right. So what you need to know is that um, within the plasma membrane um, made up of these lipids, there are some lipids that have this inositol sugar um, in, in the head region. Okay. So this sugar has a bunch of um, hydroxyl groups that can be phosphorylated. And there's a whole bunch of different um, kinases, phosphoinositol kinases, that phosphorylate position 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. doesn't really matter. There's a whole bunch of them. But one of the important outcomes of this kind of phosphorylation is to produce this lipid. And this lipid is referred to as PIP2. Okay? So PIP2 is phosphorylated on positions 4, 5. And this is PIP2. Now, PIP2 can drive um, um, a signaling pathway, or it can be converted into PIP3. So when PIP2 is in place, it can drive a pathway that we're not going to talk about, but it's an important signaling pathway that leads to um, the release of the phosphorylated inositol into the cytosol, which then turns on calcium signaling and all this stuff. Okay, so. PIP2 is an important signaling molecule that can drive this particular pathway. Okay, now PI3 kinase, what it does, it takes the PIP2 and converts it into PIP3. So it phosphorylates it on the 3 position, hence PI3 kinase. Phospho, phosphoinositol, which is this molecule here, is a phosphoinositol 3 kinase. And it turns PIP2 into PIP3. So effectively, we're looking at um, PI3 kinase that can phosphorylate PIP2 into PIP3. So PIP2 drives its own signaling pathway. PI3 kinase turns off signaling from PIP2 because it converts PIP2 to PIP3. And then PIP3 can drive its own pathway. Okay? And this is a very important molecule in cell growth and, um, and, and in cancers as well. So what does 
um, Pi3 kinase do, like I said, it phosphorylates the 3 position, so it turns PIP2 to PIP3. PIP3 can then bind to protein kinase B, okay, otherwise known as AKT. So protein kinase B becomes activated, and in the same way that a MAP kinase pathway phosphorylates a whole bunch of things by turning on gene expression, protein kinase B phosphorylates a lot of things in the cell. And then when you turn on these proteins in the cell, you drive lots of processes. So PR3 kinase converts PIP2 to PIP3 so that it can activate protein kinase B. Now, there's another um, enzyme activity, um, which is a, um, a, a phosphatase, and it basically removes um, the, the phosphate group on the third position and makes PIP2 again to drive other things. So you've got these two um, activities which are controlling the phosphorylated status of um, this inositol um, molecule, this, um, this phospholipid, and it, can, it switches between PIP2 through PR3 kinase to PIP3 and then back to PIP2 through these, this um, uh, P10 um, protein. So we've got this um, cycle of switching between these two molecules. This molecule can then activate protein kinase B that can drive um, the phosphorylation of proteins in the cell. So protein kinase B becomes activated because RAS activates PR3 kinase, which phosphorylates PIP2 to PIP3. Um, the sorts of um, substrates that become activated by this protein kinase B are proteins involved in apoptosis, proteins involved in um, proliferation, and cell growth. And we won't look at the functional consequences of this, just to say that um, a down, another downstream signaling pathway from RAS is the, um, pit, um, the PR3 kinase, which activates protein kinase B, which drives these other important phenotypes. Now, clearly, the PI3 kinase pathway that we're talking about is really important in cancer because when you take samples from these different cancer patients, you see alterations in either the PR3 kinase or the P10, which is the protein that reverses the effect of the, of the PR3 kinase. And these proteins are very important in these cancer types. So it's a very important downstream signaling.